Well, hello everybody. Today, we're going to show you how you can help yourself protect against the viruses out there all year long. You, know, you always hear about these viruses. Well, right now we're in the coronavirus, which is a, a worldwide affair. So I figured I'd go out to the grocery store, I'd stock up. So I got vegetables, I got everything. Meats, uh, chicken, steaks, lamb chops. Uh, uh, vegetables, strawberries, you name it. I've got it all. So what I've done is I've separated the uh, Brussels sprouts. We're going to start with them for now. Separated them into individual meals for me and my wife. And uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, vacuum pack them and stick them right in the freezer. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pick the size. You have to seal it first. You got to seal that end. We're going to hit seal. Once that is done, we're going to go ahead and cut that. I'll show you in a second, as soon as it's finished. Okay, it's done. Take this little thing right here, just go zip. Open it up, and you got a nice seal. So now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to mark this with a magic marker. Today is 7-3-2020. Seal them before you put the vegetables or the meats or whatever. It's a lot easier uh, to do it when it's nice and flat. And also, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this around because when we seal it, the rough, the rough side is going to go into this like this. You stick it in here, you close the door, and you vacuum seal it. But the rough side, you'll see the rough side goes down okay so we're gonna go ahead and uh, put these Brussels sprouts in here and again this is enough for my wife and I for dinner shake them up a little bit get them to the bottom and uh, I use a little uh, a little uh, piece of uh, I think this came from a piece of meat or whatever I cut it in half to lay on, you know, instead of having it all the way down. It, it kind of lets you better sit, seat this, you know what I mean? So we're going to go ahead and put that on there like that. We're going to close it. And I usually pull the edges apart a little bit to get a nice flat surface. Press it in. And you're going to see here that we've got moisture dry. Now the dry is for anything that's hard. Moist is for fruit, fruits and vegetables and uh, things that have liquid. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say vac seal. And there you go. Now, now it's done. It's sealing. You'll see the little red light sealing. And then once that's done, we're going to cut the extra off from the end of that bag. We're going to open it up. And there you go. Okay, and you'll see, got a nice little package. You take that out of the freezer, you always have fresh vegetables. Okay, and, uh, and we'll be back. I don't, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of those and then I'll be back with the next mission. Talk to you soon, bye for Okay, now. we're back. Our next mission is a quart of strawberries. And you know, forget the viruses for a minute. But to have fresh fruit and vegetables available all the time is great. Now, these strawberries were actually three for six dollars. That means two dollars a quart. It's actually pretty cheap. Uh, when I was a kid, we used to sell strawberries. I was raised on a farm. We used to sell strawberries 50 cents, 75 cents a quart. We used to grow our own. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, show you how to do the fresh, uh, fresh strawberries. They're beauties, aren't they? So here we go. Now you gotta make sure that you select enough of the bag so that you have enough room to put that whole cord in. So we're gonna try that right there. Let's see. You gotta seal it first. I hope that's enough. It doesn't look like it might, it might not be enough. If not, we'll have to uh, resize it and save that bag for something smaller. Okay, there we go. We're sealed. 
go ahead and cut it. And there you go. Now let's see if we can fit that whole quart of strawberries in here. Actually, let's go ahead and mark it first. Don't forget to mark it first. 3, 7, 20. You know, they say that you can uh, keep this stuff for like six months. Fruits, vegetables, meats, whatever. Six months if you back and pack them and freeze them. I'm just going to go ahead and stick this whole thing in there if I can. And there you have it. Got to kind of move them around, make sure that uh, all the corners are full. Shake them up a little bit. That looks pretty good. And you'll see this little tray that I've got here. It holds the strawberries up just nice enough to be able to fit that in there. Because this has really got to be straight across here before you uh, close that door. In fact, let's try that. And again, make sure you try to pull up, pull the ends. Now, because we have strawberries, we're going to use the moist setting. Because if you use the regular dry, it's going to squish those strawberries. So let's go ahead and see if this works. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. See, I forgot to pick moist. Moist. Back seal. And there we go. And you're going to notice it squeezes them together, but it doesn't crush them. And there you have it. It's sealing. And we're done. So now what I do is I cut off the excess so we have a nice package. And this is what we wasted. Not much. And there you have it. They're ready for the freezer. Okay, and uh, we'll be back with the next mission. See you soon. Okay, we're back. I already went ahead and uh, vacuum sealed this lettuce, but I just wanted to show you. You know, lettuce doesn't last very long in the refrigerator. Um, so basically, if you just vacuum back that, and again, you would use the moist sealer on this, and this salad will last up to 10 days in the refrigerator because you vacuum packed it when you take the oxygen out of the bag it doesn't let the stuff go rotten so there you have it we'll be back okay we're back <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the raspberries and the uh, blueberries so we're going to cut a little piece got to make sure we have enough room to fit a whole pint I guess that's a pint we're going to go ahead and uh, actually, I think it's just a little bit more just to be safe. You go ahead and seal it. So, uh, frozen raspberries, frozen blueberries, anytime you want them throughout the year. There we go. We're sealed. Go ahead and cut it. Roll this back a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and dump those blueberries right in there. Stick the whole tray in. Um, I forgot to mark them. I forgot to mark the date. So we're going to have to do it this way, the hard way. 7 20, excuse me, 7 3. 20 and we're ready to seal shake them up a little bit set them on top of my little tray stick them right in there and again we're going to be using the uh, the moist the moist mode make sure you pull these sides before you press them down we're going to be doing moist and go ahead and vacuum seal 
And there you go. You'll notice that it didn't crush the blueberries. Now it's sealing. And uh, once that's done, it's done. Go ahead and cut that extra off. And you have a little bit left over, but you'll notice that you've got a nice, a nice little vacuum packaged. So let's go ahead and do the blueberries. Or excuse me, let's go do the uh, raspberries. We also have a, a point of those. That should be enough right there. Go ahead and seal it. And it's almost done. It's done. Let's go ahead and cut it. Sometimes you got to ra raise this up because it didn't flatten enough. So let's bring it over on this side. Cut it off. Bingo. And there you have it. Let's go ahead and mark this. 7, 3, 20. And let's go ahead and stick those raspberries in there. We've got to push this back a little bit. Raspberries, as you know, are very delicate, so you have to be careful with them. Shake them up a little bit. And make sure that rough edge, the rough, it's got little bumps on it. You'll see it on the other side. It's got little bumps. So we're going to go ahead and stick that in there. Pull the sides together, push down, and again, make sure you use the moist back seal. And there you have it. Notice it did not crush or smush the raspberries. It's sealing now and it's done. So we're going to go ahead and cut that excess off again. And voila, there you go. Okay, our next mission, filet mignon. So you'll see I've got this nice little few filet mignons here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to put uh, two in each bag. So I think that's enough right there. Go ahead and size that. Let's just give it just a little bit more because you never know. If you're short, you're going to have to use that bag for something smaller. It's not a big deal. But it's always good to have it done the first time the right way. So we're going to go ahead and seal that. And you'll notice there's one for me, one for my wife, one for me, one for my wife. She always likes the smaller ones. Okay, so we're done here. Go ahead and zip that across. And there you go. Roll that back a little bit. And let's go ahead and stick these right in there. Make sure that when you put the, uh, the meat in, especially because it's moist, that you don't hit the insides of the bags where it's going to seal. Because if you do that, then it doesn't seal properly. It doesn't seal properly. So here we are. And again, I forgot to mark it. So I have to do it the hard way. Seven. 320. Okay. And again, you know, the meats, vegetables, whatever, will last up to six months in the freezer if you vacuum pack them. So you notice I got them nice, nice and organized. Then put that right on there. Make sure we pull the sides again. And uh, we're going to do, uh, let's see. This is meat, so we can actually do dry on meat. Okay, go ahead and vacuum seal that. And you, you 
you'll see. I don't know if you can see it or not, but you can see it sucks the juices right out. There we go, we're sealing. And you know what I should have done is I should have marked that filet mignon. Because a lot of times, if you look at it, you really don't know what it is. So there we go. Okay. You see I waste a little bit. But I'm going to go ahead and write filet mignon on there. So that we know. Okay, there's that one. Let's go ahead and do the next one. And you'll see how nice that is. Nice and vacuum packed. Sealed up good. It'll last up six months. So there we go. I think that I should put just a little bit more. Hold on. Going to go ahead and seal it. And make sure that uh, after you handle any, any meat or, or chicken or whatever, you wash your hands. It's very important that you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds to avoid any contamination. Okay, so that's done. And roll this back. And let's go ahead and stick those right in there. Up oh, again. I almost forgot to mark it. Almost forgot. And and always always write on the smooth side, not the rough side. So seven, three, twenty, filet mignon, so we know what they are. Okay. Now we go ahead and stick our meat in there. And again, make sure that you do not touch the inside of the bag with the meat because it will, it will uh, prevent it, even your fingers. I mean, if you get your fingers in there, you just gotta be very careful. And there we are, beautiful. that right on there. Close it up. Make sure you pull the sides. That's very important. When I first got this thing, it was a real pain in the butt because I didn't pull it to the sides and it needs a nice seal. So let's go ahead and vacuum seal this one. when you cut. You don't have to cut from one way or the other. There's our wasted piece. And there's our filet mignon. So we'll be back with something else in a minute. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Breakfast sausages. You'll notice two, four, six, seven, there's 14 sausages. Nobody's going to eat 14 sausages at one time. In fact, if you, if you ate half of them and you stuck the rest in the fridge, you never know how long they would last. So what we're going to do is we're going to split them up. And you're going to notice that I'm almost out of the vacuum sealer bags. And what I did was I bought like six big rolls uh, online, but they were so big that they wouldn't fit in here. So I have a way that you can save money on these vacuum bags. And I'll be putting a video together for that shortly. That'll be a separate video. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and do these first. Go ahead and seal it. And it's gonna be done. There we are, we're gonna go ahead and cut it. And I'm gonna take this one out. I gotta replace that roll. But anyway, on here we're going to make sure we mark it first. 20. 
sausage breakfast. And we're just going to take half of them and stick them in. This is actually where I got that little tray from one of these. I'm going to go ahead and put, uh, put them right in here side by side. And again, be sure to wash your hands. Stick them right in there. Make sure you pull the sides. Go ahead and uh, vac seal. And again, we're using the dry because there's, you know, there's no, not really any juices in that. Let's go ahead and sealing now. And there you go. Now you got a nice little, nice little breakfast sausage. Even if you eat half and half one day after another, no big deal. Anyway, there's your breakfast sausage. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. What we're going to do now is we're going to do some uh, some beef round chunks. And this is what my wife uses for uh, beef stew. So let's go ahead and do that. Now you'll notice we have a pretty big package here. And she will, she'll use this whole package. So we're going to kind of measure this up a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it this big. I want to make sure it's big enough. I'm going to go ahead and seal it. And uh, I guess this is the uh, best beef for the uh, beef stew. It's tender. And uh, that's what my wife likes. And there we go. We're sealed. Cut it. Let's go ahead and stick that beef right in there. I don't want to get my hands all over it, so I'm just going to stick that tray in. And remember what I said about getting the meat on the inside of the bag. It's not good. Okay? Because it gets wet, makes it harder to seal. Take that little white thing off. I'm going to move this back a little bit because there's quite a bit of meat in there. Kind of shake it up a little bit. Looks like we have plenty of, plenty of bag. As a matter of fact, I think we have too much bag. So what I'm going to do, when you, have too, when you cut too much and you don't want the bag so big, we're just going to cut that off before we seal it. Okay, so I wasted that. But you're gonna see that it's gonna be a nice, it's gonna be a nice bag. Hold on, here we go. And again, pull the sides. And again, we're gonna do the dry. So go ahead and back seal. ceiling now and uh, we're gonna do some chicken after this and that's about it I think I've demonstrated how to use this uh, this uh, Bonson kitchen vacuum sealer good enough so let's go ahead and cut that and here we are got a nice beef stew dinner and we'll be back okay we're back last but not least let's do some chicken legs and uh, once I do these, then I'm going to take you out to the uh, deep freezer that I bought. It only cost me 150 bucks. It fits in the garage nice. It's got, I bought shelves for it, whatever. So there's 14 pieces of chicken here. We're going to split them up into two different dinners. I need to make sure there's enough bag. 
So that's why I've got so much. And I think that's going to be fine. Let's go ahead and seal that. And it always pays to buy in bulk. When you, when you can buy in bulk, you save money. And again, it lasts six months in the freezer. So, And especially, you know, like they're talking about this uh, coronavirus where, you know, they're not even going to be able to go to the basketball games because too many people is going to be in the same place. I'm prepared. If I have to stay in my house, I know I've got enough food. So here we go. Go ahead and stick this chicken in there. Ah, got to mark it. Don't forget to mark it. Twenty. I'll be all set for six months. six seven so we have seven pieces it looks like I did a pretty good job <clears throat> sizing that bag so let's see shake them around a little bit and again my little tray if, if that was sitting on uh, directly on the counter it'd be harder to get a better seal so actually, we've got, uh, I'm going to go ahead and seal it the way it is. Remember to pull your sides back to back, and we're doing it dry. And you'll see that when, it's, when it vacuum packs, it crunches stuff together, so it takes less space in the freezer. Stealing now, and we're ready to rock and roll. So that's it. The next thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to show you outside the freezer, and uh, and how you can probably organize if you get a freezer like the one I did. You can organize the freezer. Anyway, we'll be back. For okay, more. before we go out to the freezer, I just want to show you a nice little trick. Remember this bag? I cut it a little bit too short for something. Plus, it had meat in it already. You don't want to put anything else in it for cross-contamination. Well, basically what I want to do now, you know how the garbage stinks if you leave this stuff in there? All the extra wrapping and all the meat? Stick it in the bag. Stick it in this bag. And just vacuum seal it. And there you go. Just a little tip before I go. Okay, here we go. We're going to vacuum seal this up. Nice thing about it, you can stick this, put this right in the garbage. Make sure you pull the sides. Stick it right in the garbage and make sure that when you do this, there's a lot of blood and stuff in there. So we have to use moist. You can't use dry because then it'll suck all the blood into the machine. We don't want that. So here we go. Look how it compacts that. Isn't that nice? Now my wife, she used to take and put that stuff in the freezer and freeze it and I'd, every week I'd have a big bag of, of all the stuff to, to throw out. And there we go, we're done. We don't even have to cut this one. Got a nice, a nice seal pack. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The bugs can't get it. It won't stink up your garbage. And uh, we're going out to the garage next. So there you are. Okay, here's how we're gonna save some money on vacuum sealer bags. The one that I, when I bought this machine, it came with a little roll, okay? And uh, you'll notice that I used that whole roll. So what I did was I went online and I bought six, uh, six big rolls. In fact, this roll is bigger than it is now because I've been using it. But uh, in order to save money, you have to make sure that you save the little cardboard roller that the unit came with. Because what I'm gonna do is I, 
And what I did was I took some tape and I actually uh, taped this whole thing so that when we stick future rolls onto, the, uh, onto this roller, okay, see that? See that broke off right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this back a little bit and we're going to go ahead and, and we're going to take this roll and we're going to start a new one. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to start a new roll. As a matter of fact, this roll here, you'll notice that little cardboard piece, you can actually use them too. But I'd rather use the, the, uh, the big one. Okay? So what we're going to do here, and you have to make sure the rough side is down, we're going to go ahead and we're going to... How did I do this the last time? Got to lay it like this. Make sure it's even on both sides and stick it to that tape. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put this roll up here because it doesn't fit. It will not fit, but it's easier to create the new roll by pulling it out like this. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start rolling this and making a smaller roll. Now eventually that roll will be small enough to fit in there so we don't have to do this. And what you have to do is you have to make sure that you push the edges together so you got a nice roll when you're done. In fact, I think by the time we're done with this roll, that other roll will be able to leave just right in there. We'll cut it, push your ends together, make sure it's nice. See, now it almost looks like that roll right there fits. And what we're going to do just a test, that, that's going to be fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut that. And there's, an, there's our roll. So now we have a brand new roll, okay? And we have this that we can use on uh, just for when we run out. Okay, and we'll take this little piece of tape right here that I saved, tape that on, and we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, we're back. I just want to show you guys. This is the uh, freezer that I bought. It's a deep freezer. It goes right in the garage. Believe it or not, it was only 150 bucks. It cost $26 a year to run this freezer, which is nothing. And this is all the stuff we can fit in it. I took all the shelves out. There's our steaks, lamb chops, Italian sausages, and this one here, I've got all my lobster tails, all my scallops, here's Brussels sprouts, here's fish, I got six pounds of, uh, of cod in there, and there's some swordfish. Over here we got steaks, we've got uh, the filet mignons, this over here is our, our uh, fruits. Strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, and over here we got one for shrimps. And you'll notice that I put these in uh, little packages because we only have like uh, six shrimps at a time. We split them up, meet me and my wife, and that's it. So there you go. My next picture, I'm going to put all this stuff back in the freezer, show you guys that it all fits in there. So I'll be back. Okay, we're back, and you'll see that I've got plenty of room for more stuff. Also, keep in mind that you should have a freezer temperature and the uh, recommended temperature for your freezer is zero degrees. Zero. Okay? So that's it. If you like this video, please like it and share it. And also, please subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. We'll be back with more.